<laughs> Thank you very much for being here. My name is Winnie Yang. I'm the CAW Sam Gindan Chair in Social Justice and Democracy at Ryerson here. The only union endowed chair across all the universities in Canada. Gindan Chair in Social Justice is to strengthen and keep creating opportunities for critical dialogues on issues that affect all of us, on issues that affect on social justice, racial justice, cultural justice, and environmental justice issues. And part of it is through this process to engage more students, more faculty, and more community members together in transforming Ryzen as the hub of social justice. So I'm really pleased that this today's event focusing on Bill C31, welcome to Canada question mark, and welcome in Canada question mark as well, sometimes. Um, we have enlisted a number of sponsors and support. Um, later on we're going to have Harold from the Ryzen Center for Immigration and Settlements to speak, but I'm really pleased that we have Ontario Council of Agencies Serving Immigrants, Canadian Civil Liberties Association's dialogue is to make sure that we, this omnibus bill is not going to get passed in the dark, in the silence, and we are going to get engaged and make sure that the government knows what are the flaws and what we need to do to take this on. So, Thank you very much again for being here. Let me call on Harold Barber, the Director for Ryzen Center on Immigration and Settlement. Thank you. I'm very pleased that Winnie invited our center, the Ryzen Center for Immigration and Settlement, to co-organize this event. RCIS is a relatively new research center um, and I think the recent developments uh, are giving us an opportunity to define ourselves and to create an identity for ourselves by focusing on activities um, or focusing our, our activities where they're really needed, like organizing and co-organizing, helping organize events like these. Our mandate includes linking theory and practice, addressing issues of social justice or injustice, Connecting the experience of immigrants in Toronto with wider political and economic contexts, including national policies and politics. And with this mandate, I think Bill C-31 is of great concern to us. Most disturbingly, the act would undermine Canada's ability to protect refugees. But I also think that the bill raises important questions about the general direction of Canada's immigration refugee policy. These policies have been marked by new practices of exclusion, including the increased use and exploitation of temporary foreign labor, a distaste, uh, to put it mildly, for, for family unification, and also an increasingly labor market driven immigration system. So I think there's also a wider story to be told. And this is why this is an important debate, and this is an important event to have. And I think it's critical that the voices of our panelists here are heard in order not only to unveil the negative impact of the, of the bill, but also to understand the, overarch the overarching motivations for the bill. Let me just introduce, Debbie is the Executive Director of Ontario Okasi and has been a long time <laughs> activist who's been helping and pushing. <laughs> and my job today is to keep our speakers on time and to ensure that there is time for you um, the audience to engage on the issue and hopefully we all come away from here um, having agreed to participate in at least one action um, as we work to have this bill turn back. I wanted to begin by saying that um, Okasi joins our colleagues across the country in calling for the Government of Canada to withdraw Bill C-31 and to bring in legislation that is fair, that is affordable, and that speaks to our international obligations as well as complies with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms that we have here in Canada. Um, I don't want to take up much time by talking about what is wrong with the bill. I'm sure you'll hear quite a bit of that from our speakers. Um, but just to set some context, Bill C-31, we've been hearing about um, federal omnibuses bills. We've heard about C-10, um, which was the crime bill. Well, BC-31 is an omnibus bill. 
Um, the bill will amend current Im Immigration and Refugee Protection Act of 2001, what we usually call IRPA. Um, it will amend the current Department of Citizenship and Immigration Act of 1994. It will also amend the legislation, Bill C-11, known as the Balanced Refugee Reform Act. And many of you may have been also engaged in the many debates we had in 2010 and 2011 around Bill C-11 C and, and trying to have some of the more draconian measures withdrawn from the bill. Well, we were successful in that. The bill actually um, received royal assent and is um, scheduled for implementation in June 29th. Bill C-31 was brought in and it brought back all of the kinds of measures that we fought against and we thought we had won last year. The bill also marries Bill C-4, which is our anti-smuggling bill which is a bill that purports to speak to um, preventing smugglers, but instead what it does is that it punishes refugees. It punishes those who are seeking asylum in Canada. It punishes those who are fleeing persecution and violence in their country of origin. And, it, and, and it's sending a very clear message that Canada is really not about protection anymore, that Canada is no longer willing to open its doors to the world's vulnerable, but in fact what we will do is that we will define you as irregular, we will define you as bogus, and when that fails, we will jail you for up to a year. That's the, kind, that's the context in which we're operating, and this is the conversation we're, we're hoping to have today. And I think that it is important that all of us as Canadians, that we make this a public debate. That we don't allow our federal government, because of a majority, to push through legislation that speaks against our values as, as a people in Canada. And so uh, let me introduce our three speakers. They will each have 15 minutes to um, present, and then I will open up the floor for discussion and to talk through strategy in terms of what's happening. And I know that there are a number of other initiatives and folks in the audience who are wanting to promote their work, and I will give you some time at the end um, before we all leave here today to do that, because I think that the more voices we have speaking on the bill, the, the more I think the message will get to Ottawa that as Canadians we are taking this very seriously, and as Canadians we're saying no, we're saying no to a bill that criminalizes those who are most vulnerable in the world and those who come to our shores seeking protection. So our first speaker will be Natalie Derosier, and I won't read Natalie very impressive bio, but Natalie has been general counsel of the Canadian Civil Liberties Association since 2009. She was previously Dean of the Faculty of Law, Civil Law Section of the University of Ottawa for four years from 2004 to 2008, and President of the Law Commission of Canada from 2000 to 2004. Please welcome Natalie de Rossi. Well, thank you very much for uh, being here and thank you for uh, caring about this issue. Bill C-31 is entitled Protecting Canada's Immigration System Act. In our view, it protects no one and threatens many. Refugee processes may need to be improved and streamlined, but Bill C-31 is not the right way. It is unconstitutional and it is unwise and immoral. The bill gives the power to the, uh, to the minister to designate any group of people arriving in Canada and to jail them for 12 months without any judicial review. They can only be released at the minister's pleasure or when their refugee status is determined. On its face, this is a violation of the charter protection against arbitrary detention it's a, it's a violation of charter protection that guarantees the right to habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is an old thing that exists since the Middle Ages that gives you the right to have your detention being evaluated by a judge to see whether it's legal or not. And this prevents uh, judicial oversight for 12 months. The Supreme Court has not tolerated 120 days detentions without judicial review for suspected terrorists. It will not tolerate 365 days detention 
without judicial review for people who are not suspected of any it crime. It further penalizes the members of the designated group, even if they are found to be refugees. They are prevented from becoming permanent residents for five years, and during that five-year period, will not be able to seek family reunification, will not be able to travel, and it will indeed delay their access to citizenship and their access to full participation rights in Canadian society. This discrimination is completely unnecessary. It creates a second class of refugees based solely on the minister's discretion at the time of their arrival and seems to impose punishment for the sake of punishment. It does not have any rational basis. There are other changes proposed that are equally worrisome. The minister may strip away permanent resident status for people who have obtained refugee status on the basis that the minister is deeming that the situation in their country of origin has improved. And upon such determination, uh, now from, from now on, according to the bill, the person could be deemed inadmissible in Canada and therefore deported. There's, it's irrespective of how long they've been in Canada or their personal circumstances. Another thing that's wrong with the bill, there's no longer any appeal process for people claiming refugee status from what the minister says are safe countries. <coughs> it is the minister who determines which countries are safe. When the minister has decided a country is safe, it is almost kind of presumed that it cannot have any residents that are suffering from persecution. And the process for the claimants from that country is much more difficult and harsher. One can easily see how a country would really want to be on Canada's safe list and how economic and commercial interests could influence a minister to make such determination. Or, refuse to remove a country that is on a safe list uh, for economic or commercial reasons. What if for commercial interests, the minister designated China, Colombia, uh, India, any other country that you can think of to be a safe country, would we be satisfied that there are no persecution of individuals in China, India, Colombia? <coughs> People flee persecution because of their sexual orientation, because of their political affiliation. Women often flee because it's unpunished family violence against them. Are we prepared to accept that a minister in Ottawa knows where there is oppression around the world? For good reason, international law requires an individual, individualized process for refugee determination not a group assessment based on second-hand knowledge. Finally, the bill imposes short mandatory delays, as short as 15 days, to complete the paperwork, which makes it unlikely that people will get legal advice or assemble the evidence needed. Many will be turned away, and many will be sent back to potential danger.